What's up everybody? Mr. Chad here, back again with some Banner Saga. So, let us resume where we last left off. I have strangely forgotten. Um, ah, oh yes, so we, we won a battle, and now we're going to talk to, um, let's just call him Gil. That is his sort of nickname. Let's, let's call him Gil. That's great. Sort of Eggles. I might like Eggles too. My Smash Brothers tent. There's some serious uh, Smash going on in here, so uh, nobody going there. Very important. Um, we only have seven days of supplies at normal morale. We need to... Is there a market around here? I guess not. All right, let's go to Gil. How's the arm, Eagle? You find Eagle, that's Gil, outside the camp practicing his sword swings. I saw you taking some hard hits out there. Oi. Yeah, I'm great. Er, not great, consider everything, that's fine, I am fine. Uh, uh okay. <laughs> My mom's fine, strong shit. It's real right? I know we haven't talked much before now, but if you want, just call me Gil. I already did. Thanks. Okay, Gil. I wanted to let you know what I meant. Er, I want you, I wanted to let you know that I meant what I said before, but making sure nothing happens to Alette. Uh, okay, I've never seen a shield like that. I have seen a shield like that. But, uh, okay. Yeah, I doubt there's many. I, I doubt there's many. My father made this. It's solid metal, really heavy. But I've been practicing with it since I was a kid. I used to spend a lot of time just getting used to lifting it. He raises up to show you. I'm pretty good with it now. It's the only thing of my father's I have left. Then when my mother died, she gave it to me before she died. Sorry, bro. Did he say that? That's good. I'm trying. Never had to fight anything like Dredge before, but I don't have much else to do. And how many people get to train with a Varl? Just seems like I could be a help to somebody. That's what I want to be. So you're protective of a lead, huh? Well, she's... I don't want to want her to get hurt. You see his cheeks turn bright red? Aww. Well, if they're bright red, he has a very good complexion. Don't worry, she can take care of herself, too. I know, I didn't mean... Easy, Gil, I know what you meant. Alright, heading back. I will. Oh, and if you need something, let me know. I can do anything you need. Between you and Ivor, we're gonna be all okay. I can tell. Hmm. Hmm. I actually don't think that's true. <laughs> I guess we'll find out, won't we? Okay, now, did anyone die? Or does anyone need rest? No? Oh yeah, that's right, we need some promotions since last time. I've totally forgotten. Okay, so this guy, he has two points available. Uh, let's crank up his armor, because he takes a lot of freaking damage. Uh, no, nothing. Oh yeah, she can be promoted, great. Yes, please. Um, let's see, let's... Um, she has freaking awesome willpower. Let's crank one of her... Actually, let's crank her strength. Since she's damaging from behind. And Rook is still level 2. Did I equip him with anything yet? What is this? Okay, yeah. Let's give him that. Okay. And... That looks pretty good. Uh, let's put these guys after they've been armor broken. So I'm, my my th my thoughts are telling me that these two can break armor, or these three can break armor, maybe, and then these two can take advantage of it. I guess we will find out. Um, I've never been past this point before, so I'm kind of nervous. Um, yeah. Okay, so we don't need to go play Smash Brothers. Uh, let's leave and see where our journey takes us. Got seven days of supplies. Okay. Caravan halts when a group of men appear on the trail, weapons at their feet. We've seen the dredge in your wake, says one. We don't wish to meet them alone. If you let us join you, we'll show you a watering hole with enough animals to fill the supply wagons. An inherent fear of strangers raises mutters from the cavern. Um, what are you doing out here alone? We are hunting here for food when the dredge found our village, says the man. When we returned, he looks away, unable to finish. Um, well, let's allow them to join. See what they can do. If we have to kill them, then... Oh well, but, you know, whatever. 
If there'll be no trouble, come along, you say. The men cautiously join your ranks and prove trustworthy. Oh, sweet! The hidden watering hole nearby is teeming with animals, and soon your supplies are nicely restocked. Excellent. And we got 12 fighters, 5 are down. 18 supplies, damn! This is awesome. Morale has become poor. Okay, let's, uh... Wait. During a rest, one of the men gets too drunk and ends up splashing mead in a warrior's face. A brawl erupts. Many thrown fists and broken bone later, the instigator, Raffensfarter, is tossed at the ground on the ground at sh your feet. Angry clansmen looking for satisfaction. His personal defense is a little more than drooling mumbles. Um. Okay, well. Uh, let's tie him up until he dries out. You grab a rope from the supplies and make short work of the soft of the sot. A few onlookers throw scraps at him, but most just walk away with a laugh. At least content that some measure has been taken. Good. Oh, and let's camp. So we never want to. You never want to go into battle with poor morale if you can help it. Um, it's never, never a good idea. Um, at least from my experience. Let's do one more, and that should keep our morale high for a few days. Um, the reason being is that your willpower will actually be decreased in battle, which you don't want whatsoever. No morale just is. You get your base stats, and that's all you get. Um, with good morale, you'll get, I think, plus one or plus two. And with um, great morale, I think it's plus two or plus three. So, Caravan is vis visibly relieved to find a small village on the way to Frostveller with beds and fresh supplies. The locals here are shocked by the news you you bring and discuss it amongst themselves while you set up nearby. Okay, so we hit a town. Good. I need some supplies. Um, I'm running quite low, so let's do that. Okay, uh, whoa, is that, is that an epic? A cursed fang said to fill itself with the blood of its enemies and grant power of those who would f keep it full. Holy crap, three will per kill? Oh my, oh my god, should I get that? One will per turn, that's still pretty good too. Oh my god, these are freaking awesome. Uh, I can't afford that, oh my god, I can't afford that. But nobody's level four, and no one's level three. Um, let's just get some supplies. Ah. Ah. Okay, so they have 13 days worth of supplies now. One will per turn. That's really good. Um. You know, I, I think I'm going to risk it. Um, I, I haven't had any willpower problems yet. I know I will eventually, but right now it doesn't seem to be um, that bad. So let's check our map. Let's see where we are. We're in Frost... or uh, the city right before Frostveller. Uh, okay, so Frostveller, which is where we're going to. Once sitting upon the bank of a wide lake, when the Nordfelling turned to waste... The city of Frostveller became a tattered bastion blasted by the freezing winds that rolled through the valley. Those who live there are still not known for their hospitality. Okay. Sounds like a great place to be. Okay. Alright, um, I don't think we need to rest. Yeah, we don't need to rest. We can leave. Okay. So, just a nice place to sort of settle and get a market going. Okay, you're only just outside the village when two men in red approach. My name is Hogun, says one, gesturing to the other. My brother is Mogun. Many from the village wish to join you into Frostveller. A third man, exuding rage, charges up to the group. Shut your mouth, Hogan! He screams. Oh, this is a battle. Oh. What's going on? These bastards don't speak for us. They've been trying to divide the village since you got here. True. You can keep whoever wants to stay and die. The rest of us will go with the reasonably reasonable people of Skogger. I'll be both gutted before I let half the village desert. Behind the angry villager, a mob of armed thugs have appeared, all furrowed brows and nervous stares. You both know what will happen to the rest of us if the fields are abandoned. Nobody leaves. Uh, oh, oh okay. Um, let your people decide on your own. I don't want anything to do this. Say nothing. Um... Well, technically, this happened to us, so there won't be anything to tend once the dredge arrived. I mean, they screwed us over, and we had a pretty good army. Dredge my ass! I don't know what the scam is this time, Hogan, but you got two choices. Get back to work, or finally put a hue in the crowd. Mogan, what do you say? 
thought it was unfair that he only asked me. Mogan draws his axe slowly, followed by Hogan. Despite their confidence, they're already actually drawing the axe. Uh, yeah, just want to point that out. Despite their confidence, the brothers are significantly outnumbered. I think I make a poor farmer. Um, sell us yourselves. I won't kill men for defending their homes. That's the nice guy route. I really let's make this a fair fight. Uh, these guys kind of seem weird to me. I don't know. Should I? I don't know. I don't know how they fight, if they even they fight, so honestly, I'm not really sure. Uh, well, I won't kill people for defending their homes, technically. So, I won't. Sorry. Hogan and Mogan lose some of their bravado as Ivor approaches the scene. Shield raised. They drop their axes. Didn't expect that. Not seeing as they fled their own town. We wouldn't survive the next winter with neglected farms. These bastards know that. We're not ungrateful. I'll have something sent to you before you go. Okay, sweet. So we get something out of it. And uh, I guess we don't have to fight. The clansmen haul the two brothers roughly back to the village. Before you leave, a generous selection of fruits and other foods are sent to the caravan. You soon return to the road, wondering how long it'll be before the dredge arrive here, too. Holy crap! 50 freaking supplies? And great morale. Oh, good morale. Oh my god! That is amazing. Okay, Let marches quietly alongside the caravan, a little distant since leaving the village. When you stop for a rest, Oddleif approaches you both. Alette, I have something for you. Oddleif has gathered up the long banner from the caravan and smiles warmly as she passes it to Alette. What's this about? I was hoping you'd sew up the banner with everything that has happened since we left Skogger. Come find me another time, Rokin will talk. Before you can comment, she departs. Wait, so they stitch stuff into a band? Like, word by word they stitch it? Or is it like a symbol? Because that's, that's a lot of, uh, that's a lot of stitching to do. Um, I'm not much of a seam, seam person. I'm not much of a sewer. But, uh, I can tell you that sewing in words would take a long time. Anyways. Uh, Dad, are you the chieftain now? Um, looks that way, I guess. I am the leader. Oh, then that means you're both quiet for a moment while Let unfurls the banner. Oddlife has been teaching me how to sew. Oh, sweet. So I don't have to sew. Great. She speaks pretty highly of you. Can we read the part about Mom? You nod. On the banner... On the banner has been sewn the story of the families who lived in Skogger throughout the years, just as is done on every banner in every town. Okay. Oh, so the banner saga. I just got it. Just, just register with my tiny brain. That's fantastic. I wish she were here, but I'm kind of glad she isn't. The section of Banner about your family is short, but Let has been sewing in colorful designs. Why do you say that? So she doesn't have to deal with all of this dredge, leaving home, and... Why did you leave those men behind in the village? Won't the dredge come for them? I mean, if it's okay to ask. Uh, well, I mean, I didn't want to kill villagers. I don't know, like... I, I don't know. <laughs> I did, well, where's the I don't want to kill people? Um... It, it, it had to be their decision. Technically, if they wanted to leave, we can't force them to go. Something what happens to other people. I'm glad I'm not you. I wouldn't know what to do. I'm not exactly... It's not exactly my calling, either. Yeah, I know, Dad. But I think you're doing a good job. Well, thanks. She hugs you. You spend the rest of your time together sewing new verses into the banner. For better or worse, the story of Skogger is your burden now. It is my burden. Okay. So we could do a couple things. We could uh, we could rest up to great morale, but uh, I don't know if that's necessary. Uh, I don't know how many days it would be until great morale kicks in. Oh, there it is. Sweet. Okay, let's talk to Oddleif. How you doing, Odd? All right. Not at first. Sometimes when a loved one dies, people say it doesn't sink in for a while. It sunk in for me right away. People tell me I'm a, quote-unquote, strong woman. It's funny. My father named me Oddleif before I was even born. He wanted a boy so badly. Strong woman. What does that even mean? Uh... <laughs> uh I don't know. You're gonna have to figure that out by yourself. I never care for that expression. If I feel nothing about my husband dying, people think I'm strong. If I cry because my insides feel like they're on fire, I'm weak. Why does that feel so backwards? I'm sorry, Rook. It has been hard. You're not sure what to say. In the many years you've known the chieftain's wife, this is probably the most you've ever talked. You asked me to come find you. 
Yes, it's about the banner. I thought about it a long time. He asked me to give it to you, you know, if something happened. Why me? What would you have done? Your family, you should carry it. You're right. I should. It should be mine. I could carry it. But I thought about why he named you. He named me. I get it. They won't follow a woman. Why? Families would leave. Our banner would be divided. Uh, I guess you're, you're probably... Uh, actually, I would vouch for you. Come on, Rook. This isn't time for pretend. What? I'm, I'm just being Batman. You don't like my Batman impression? It's, it's, it's not just about a small town. What happens the first time we need something other than from another clan? How will that go? And the first time someone thinks they can take advantage of us? I think this is what has to happen. <sighs> Maybe. This is a city. This city just showed you. That's full of people. Ready to have strong women. She looks sideways, eventually giving you a timid, a timid smile. I'm not sure if that's the dumbest thing I've ever heard or the sweetest. Uh, maybe a little bit of both. I don't know. Listen, I know I dragged this out. The truth is, my husband and I could never have a child. Well, that was abrupt. Okay. I don't want our banner to end here. It'll be safe with you and Alette. I know you're going to take care of her. She puts a hand on her sh shoulder as she heads back to camp. Plus five or down. Boom. Yes. Okay. Um, no reason to be here anymore. Let's take off. Let's get to Frostville already. I've already abandoned one village to their fate by accident, I guess. I, I, was I supposed to kill them? I don't know. And a small split in the trail. A few fires stopped to speak with you, each carrying a single pack. We recognize this place, one man says. Spent several years here with some kin. If they're still around, we have to warn them of what's coming. With luck, we'll find you again in less than a week. Um, tell them they're... Uh, let's just set them up. Okay, send them out extra supplies. If that's all you're taking, you may never make it, you say. Grabbing a few items from a supply wagon, you strap on additional provisions to their back. Search for family instead of food, you say with a smile. The men clasp their wrists before departing. I lost eight fighters. I lost three supplies. That's that's not too bad. So that sort of evened out. It, um, so basically just one day of supplies since they left and I gave them supplies. So I only lost one uh, due to the sort of thing. I don't know. Anyways. Uh, complaints of rest and far excessive drinking of resource. This time the man has stumbled over some tent ropes, pulled the snag canvas through a campfire, nearly setting a supply wagon aflame. You son of a bitch. Stop fucking drinking. Clansman put out the fire on both the wagon and Ran Raffin Sparter's leg before leading him to you. All right, you know, I'm gonna, I'm gonna, I'm gonna beat the crap out of him. You're considering what your options when Olive appears. I know I'm doubles over him over with a gun gut shot. Boom! Endanger everyone again, and you'll get more than a cracked rib. She shouts, leaving in a huff. The others go back to their business, satisfied with the outcome. Sweet. Well, apparently violence does solve everything. That's the lesson we learned here. Okay, this guy's a freaking fool. Dredge shouts the man from the back of the caravan. It's Raffin Sparter. Oh my god. What is this guy's problem? The unabashed drunk, staggering towards you, looking not entirely sober. He screams again, pointing towards the trees. And fear, blah, blah, blah. Fear races through the caravan as the fighters pull their weapons. This guy's turning around sightings and furious men surround. Okay, you know... Should we let him d deliver justice or just banish his ass? This guy's completely worthless. You know what? Just kill him. A swift and brutal beating befalls Raffin there. One of them leaves from begging for mercy. The next time he is on offered meat, the man shies away in fear. As for the rest of Carafine, everyone seems pretty satisfied. Good. I'm glad. I'm glad that violence gets you everywhere. All right, we're almost a Frostfeller. Once a strong, thriving city, the walls of Frostveller now just keep the howling winds at bay. With luck, they'll hold out against Dredge as well. All right, so we have approached a very nice-looking Frostfeller. That is a freaking huge caravan. This is great. You jostle through fallow crowds of sunken faces who appear as though they've been freezing in Frostfeller for days. The gates are closed. You come to a stop at the bottom of the hill. This is not looking good. Why are there so many people in the fields? We can't just stay outside in, in the open like this. All they funds amongst the refugees. Rook, I just talked to some of the women here. Nobody's being let into the city. Why? It's overrun with Varl from bl 
Blotzbalker, Greyhorn, people from Bitra, all in their nearby villages. The dredge are everywhere. And the chieftain of Frostvaler has locked himself in his great hall. That's when they close the gates. When the dredge come, these hills were turned red. We have to get in there. Okay, um... I want to know about what more what's going on in here. Okay. I see a lot of people gathered around the rest of the houses and the gates. Uh, we should... We could go find out what they know. How can we get in anyway? They closed the gate. I can get that gate open. Okay. Let's see if there's any other way before we can start breaking gates down. I wasn't going to break it, just push really hard. <laughs> yep. Just push really hard. Okay. Uh, so they told us to go to the rest house. Uh, whoa. Okay, I guess I wasted a day. You spend a whole day at the rest houses, everyone gives you the same story. The chieftain just shut himself inside the gates. There are a lot of wounded people here, we could help them, okay? Gil pulls you aside. I followed the outside of the city walls, and there's a water passage we could squeeze through, I think. Not the whole caravan, but it's a handful of us that we, of us to get in. We might open the gates from the inside. The rest of the house is overflowing with refugees, the sick and wounded, and noise. Um, let's tend to the wounded. Spend the day along with the others, most of which came from the archers at the gates. I overheard from one of the women that the city has been sending carts with food around. Uh, could be... Could be a way in next time they send a cart back in. Aside from leading to a fight, it would probably mean no more food for refugees. Well, we can't do that. Uh, let's leave the food cart alone. I don't want to get involved if, we're, if people are going to suffer for it. Let's check out the water passage. I'm not fitting through there, says Ivor, when you arrive in the narrow ducks. Go without me. It looks like you'll get on top of the walls and then down to the gate where you can open it. Ah, oh, shit. Man, without Ivor? They seize my freaking tank. What am I supposed to do? Ah, damn it. Okay, um... Alright. We'll be quick. When, when Gil said water, you should have guessed runoff. So you managed to squeeze your way through the tight stonework and force your way past an iron grate. You take the stairs to the top of the walls as you approach the ga gates. Our men take notice. They don't ask questions. <laughs> ah, shit. Okay. Okay. So I don't have my big-ass tank. This may be a very bad decision. <laughs> this may very well end in tears. Uh, already I'm not liking this. <laughs> Shit. Okay, so... I can't see who moves at what times, but I can assuredly go here. And, uh, this guy can take some punishment. So let's ready up. Um... Yeah, let's go here, and then Stonewall. Okay, sweet. Uh, Alright, so... Then the archer will go next. And him. And then... Okay, so pretty much everyone around will go before... Uh, he gets hurt. So, this should be good. Okay, so let's uh, let's move. Where can I... Can he hit anybody? He can. If he uses a willpower. Um... How far can this guy move here? Okay... I think... I think actually here's good. Yeah, here's good. Um, let's, uh... Yeah, we can use the armor. Oh! Alright, sweet. And that's gonna do zero. Perfection. Uh, it looks like I can't really do a whole lot. Um, I could probably do a rain of arrows, maybe. Um, probably around this side of him. Now I know for a fact that I, I learned this by uh, by watching someone who's actually decent at this game, and uh, actually if someone triggers that trap, um, they will. Actually, it, their turn is over. So if they, if you at any point get them to trigger a trap, their turn is over. Okay, so we have this guy here. Um, let's just let's just knock him down. And uh, we have great morale, so our willpower is pretty damn good. Let's um, let's knock this guy's armor a bit. And now that I have three archers, I could actually 
uh, I could probably use Mark Prey on this guy next turn, and he will probably get totally screwed. Um, because everyone will attack that, like, even archers will attack, so. Uh, let's, uh, let's attack this guy. Yeah. Okay, now Gil should be okay, I think. Um, okay, this guy's dead. And who's next? One damage. Okay. So let's use, um... Let's use Stonewall. Oh, there we go. Stonewall. Stonewall is pretty damn good. Uh, it pretty much negates all damage. If you guys didn't see my last episode, it pretty much negates all damage. It's pretty cool. Um, let's use, uh... Let's use Mark Bray. See what I can do. And one, and two. Rook will probably take a little bit of damage, but that's okay. Okay, let's see here. Uh, move back here. And attack this guy. Ooh, uh, let's do armor. This is actually probably one of the strongest guys on the map here. Actually, he is. He must be like the leader. Aha! Double resist! Eat it! So he tried to go all out on my guy, but he failed. Failed miserably. Uh, who's next? This guy who can attack my girl. I don't like that. Um, let's move her back. And attack his face. There we go. Okay, so we're doing pretty good, I think. Uh, let's put Gil into siege mode. And she's gonna attack who? Oh, one of my guys. Oh, how dare you. Okay, who has, who's moving next? Um, this guy right here. Okay, so what we want to do is let's uh let's, let's move back okay i don't think he's gonna walk all the way around just to get to me so i'm just gonna knock this guy a little bit because he has the most health right now yeah he won't do any damage good okay so just as i anticipated um we are going to put, uh, let's see, she does one damage, does one damage. Where's her special move? Now I'm curious if, I wonder if he'll trip this. Yeah, let's put it here. Uh, let's just see how stupid he is. I doubt he's this stupid, but maybe he is. I don't know. One of them will have to cross it. Uh, I guess we'll find out who. Alright, let's knock down his shield a bit. And resist again. Fantabulous. Okay. So, I'm just going to keep shield walling. Come on, walk in it. Yeah, sweet. Okay, sweet. And his turn is done. Excellent. Okay. Uh, who's who's next to attack? The archer woman. Okay. She doesn't do that much. So we are going to just outright kill this guy. He's going to get promoted again. And she's going to get shot. Okay. Um, let's attack this guy again. And go, go, zero. These guys are not very smart. They are not very smart at all. Uh, sweet. Okay, so she can get another kill. Beautiful. <laughs> oh my god, these guys are just not smart at all. Uh, okay, I still want to do... <laughs> still, still more. Go. 
the cheapest ass move ever. Oh, how dare you. Okay. Let's knock this bitch's armor out. Let's trap right there so he doesn't move. Aha! I knew he was going to move there. Fool. Okay. Let's, uh, let's attack her so she's a little bit weaker. She doesn't do any more damage to me. Actually, she still will do damage to me, but that's okay. Um... Only do one, huh? Okay. Hmm. Feeling the shield wall. Feeling that shield wall. This is this is ridiculous if this actually works. Oh my god, it works. <laughs> okay. Uh next guy to move is there. Okay, so what I want to do is walk up to his face and say, hey. You. I need you to not walk up here. Thanks. Alright, just do one damage to me, hopefully. No? Okay, one damage to her. Um... Can I move up? Oh yeah, I can. Okay. So let's move up and uh, get rid of this girl's strength here. Hopefully they don't kill Let. I don't want them to. Sweet! Excellent. That couldn't have worked any better. Um, let's use this. And shoot... his armor. It's a shame my giant tank isn't here anymore. Oh, crap. No! Ah, well, that might be dead. That's okay. I can kill this girl. Deflect, deflect! Ah, oh, well, I wasn't that lucky. Okay. So, let's... Let's knock out this guy and get into pillage mode. And who's he? He went back to attacking him. Okay. Uh, probably not the best idea. That's okay. Okay. So now I can basically just smack him down one. And he won't be able to hurt my guys. Or not very much, anyway. Yeah, this guy's screwed. Okay, so let's move back. And I guess we can attack his armor. I'm trying to get Eggle to get a kill, but maybe that's just not possible. Yeah, it's probably just not possible. Um, maybe it is. Uh, let's see. Hold on. I wish I I wish you could see what their exp was, but um, yeah, he has he has more than enough. We're just gonna rest this guy. And, uh, let's have her kill him. Let's, uh, let's get her skill up a bit here. Sweet. Alright, successful. Alette got, uh, killed, but, uh, she'll be back. No big deal. Alright, Rook is ready for promotion. Alette is ready for promotion. So she still got a promotion. Actually, everyone got promoted in this battle. Perfect. Great. <laughs> what the fuck? What is this face? Hey, hey, what you doing? What are you doing over there? I want you. That, that is the that is a freaking weird face. That's a face that challenges you right there. That's a face. His, his eye is even twitching. <laughs> what in depth are you doing? Letting ourselves in. I see that. I'm very impressed. But all those people you're letting in, dead. All them women, children, but you, man. What? Hey, they chose to fight me. I just walked through the gate, you know. 
And thanks for killing the only one who holding this place together, Skull. What are you talking about? The man orders his guards to get the doors closed again before more refugees notice. Echo, okay? Echil. Echo. If I knew there were fighters and viral outside, I would have brought you in. I'm Echo. I'm in charge here. You heard about the chieftain? We heard he's hiding out in the Great Hall, so they would have let us in anyway. Okay, so that was basically entirely pointless. Uh, we heard he's hiding out in the Great Hall. Oh, really? I think you mean hiding out in a grave. He's eating worms, if that wasn't clear. What happened in there? As soon as they heard Dredge were coming, anyone who couldn't swing an axe got one into the head. That's the short story, anyway. At least three clans in here warring over turf and food, and the worst are the godforsaken Varl. Uh, he eyes Ivor and shrugs, the, shrugs with exaggeration, as if simply stating the obvious. We're in more danger here than out there. Look, I was in charge here before things went to crap. You've got some people who can fight. You've got your own Varl. That counts for something. I can keep your flock safe in the Great Hall. You fight for me and take back Frostfeller. I don't take sides. Too hard to tell when the good guys have become the bad. <laughs> they keep setting me up for these Batman references, but, uh... <laughs> you either die, hero, or you live long enough to see yourself become the villain. There you go. <laughs> that was Ivor talking. That wasn't me. Uh, fine. Cut these sheep loose and wash your own asses. What do I care? All I want to do right now is get out of these damned streets. Think carefully about what you want. Um... We'll join you, for now. Good. Because whatever else you're thinking would have been a bad idea. <laughs> okay. Okay. Echo shots to his men, and with the gates closed, you follow da him down obscured alleys. Hope we know what we're doing. Making it up as we go, Ivor. That's pretty much true. Little did they sleep. I really hope I can sleep, actually. Because, uh... Oh, cutscene. Huck on. We're back. I was able to get about as many warriors from Strand as you wanted, and more weapons, extra supplies too. Plus a hundred var, plus a hundred fighters, plus two hundred supplies? Holy shit. Okay. You perk up, just now really realizing Mogar has been talking to you. Since Wagner died, everyone's been looking to, to make decisions. It's exhausting. Huck on. I heard you. I was saying that the var we went to Strand have returned. The governor gave us most of what we wanted. Good enough. Much resistance from the governor. Some. I don't think he was happy about us buying his fighters using his own money. Also, he insisted we take a lackey on his watch over his property, quote-unquote. A man named Eric. Eric. Eric? I met him. He seems competent enough. He is very competent. Regardless, the governor will have to get over it unless he wants dredge crawling through his streets. We put down every slag that has wandered through here while you were gone. Enough flapping of mouths then? You sure that wound has healed, Luden? Well, his spear broke in half, so... Uh-huh. I agree. Enough has already gone on... Uh, enough has already gone wrong. If something happens to the prince on a mission of peace, the alliance would rot. Or worse. Um... Okay, if Luden makes his own decisions, uh... Uh, yeah, there's no reason to stay. What do you expect me to do? Go back to my father and tell when one Varl died so the alliance is over? He has a point. As Wagner's kinder, as Wagner's kinder, you have the same responsibilities, Hakon. We'd only be made to do this again later, and I will not suffer it a second time. Either take us through the wandering, roar, wandering road, or do your job and slaughter some dredge. Luton turns abruptly with a scowl. He stamps back to the ring of tents and followers. Wandering road is not an option with this many. I would crush that boy's skull with one hand. If Luton won't be deterred, you'll have to deal with it. Don't let Luton get to you. Let's go. I'm sick of looking at this dump. What do I tell the warriors, Hakon? Um, tell them we will cover the mountainside and dredge bodies. Good. Give the word. And we'll set off. Okay, so is this is this camp? Is 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 is, is this camp? Okay. Uh, yeah. So we are going to uh, pause for now. Um. Yeah. So we had some fun adventures. We got a battle in. Got some more dialogue in. Looks like uh, Rook and Alette have been let in at Frostveller. And uh, now we're going to help them retake the castle. And then as for this, we are still moving to Grofheim. And we will do that on the next episode. So talk to you guys later. And um, yeah, have a great night. See ya.